Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our RPR training. This is Realtors Property Resource. And of course, it is a benefit of our membership to the Association of Realtors. Guys, my name is Robert, and I want to thank you all for joining. We are recording our session, and you can always watch our past recordings inside of our YouTube channel, and I will share that with you later on in the class. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask questions. This class is for you. Um, so it's meant to be interactive and we're going to learn all about RPR and how to use RPR. Again, RPR is a member benefit. You will find it inside of the Miami Gateway. And if you look inside of your Miami Gateway, you will find RPR. RPR also has a mobile app. For those of you that uh, would like to use RPR on your mobile phones, you can uh, do so by downloading the RPR mobile app. Today, we are going to use it inside of the computer. And of course, we're going to go ahead and click here, and that's going to open up RPR. If you're brand new to this program, it's going to open up a page where it's going to require you to create an account. Creating an account is very simple. It's going to ask you for your last name and your license number. Then it's going to send you an email where you can then confirm your account, and you will be granted access to RPR. RPR can be accessed also from inside of the MLS and even inside of IMAP when looking at properties. This is a nationwide program. This allows you to look up, look up any property in the entire US, whether it's uh, off market or for sale, you'll be able to look up properties for sale here in Florida. All right, so you won't see properties that are for sale outside of Florida, but you will see public records, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and begin real quick here on the upper right corner by clicking on that circle that you see here. That's where my picture is. This is where you're going to set up your account. You're going to go to profile. And here you're going to upload your photo. You're going to upload also our company logo. Make sure your information is correct. Make sure that your contact information is also correct. Your email and those of you that with a website, make sure that your website is in here. And you want to go ahead and save this information on the upper right corner. This information is all part of your branding. And you want to make sure that you have your branding in place. So when you share reports with your customers, it's fully branded. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, save it. And we're going to go back to the home page. All right, on the upper right corner, once again, if you click there, you also have settings. You can visit settings and you have some basic settings. So when looking at residential properties, it's gonna give you the new listings of 30 days. And it's going to give you closed listings 90 days. So when you're looking for comps, it's going to give you 90 days. You can always stretch this out to 180 days if you'd like. And same thing for commercial. Uh, new listings in the last 30 days and recently sold listings within 180 days. All right. So I actually want to keep the closed sales for um, for residential to 90 days. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 90 days and we're gonna go ahead and click on save. All right, go back to the home page. All right guys, so on the upper left corner, there is a little toggle switch where you guys can access residential properties or commercial properties. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and stick to residential, but just know that if you are gonna search commercial properties, you want to search over to commercial. Now you can search commercial properties. Otherwise, we're going to keep it in residential. At the very top, you do have your menu items. You have research. This allows you to search for a property, conduct a map search, view market trends, neighborhood searches, school searches, residential market activity searches, and then you have some commercial searches that you see there. All part of research. Marketing, you have here prospecting for residential clients. Same thing, prospecting for commercial clients. You have the ability to create a residential property flyer and a commercial property report. 
When you click on reports, these are all the reports that are going to be available to us. We have the property report that highlights the property that we are studying. We also have the seller's report, which is more mostly uh, most often uh, considered as the listing presentation or the CMA report. We have a property flyer and we have other reports that you see here. These are all reports that you can create inside of RPR. Then also click on the help section. There is a toll free number that you can access 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can also chat with a live agent by clicking on live chat and you can access more training materials by clicking on training area. And then lastly, if you click on learn here, you're going to access webinars, you're going to access uh, uh, flyers, you're going to access, uh, you know, PDF files and uh, shareable videos on how to use RPR. All right. So let's go ahead and get started up here. We do have a search bar where you can enter any property address. You can enter a folio number. You can even enter an MLS ID number. To the right, you do have type status. This allows you to select whether you're looking for a property that's currently for sale, for lease, or if you're looking at public records, you have to check public records. Then here you have active, all the statuses, right? You have active, active under contract, pending, closed, withdrawn, canceled, expired. To the right of that, you do have property types. These are your single family home, condo, co-op, your residential property types. If you want to see commercial property types, then you're going to switch over to commercial. And then let's take a look at the commercial property types. We have commercial, healthcare, motel, hotel, industrial, uh, multifamily, land, office, restaurant, bar, retail, shopping center, and special purpose. All right, those are your commercial property types. Let's go back to residential. And then, of course, you have price, bedrooms, bathrooms, and more filters. All right, so just take a look at your homepage. Uh, take a look here. We have my properties. Any saved properties will be located here. Any recent properties like uh, history uh, will be here. Any reports will be here and any notes that you may have here. On the left, you'll see here, these are the properties that you have worked on in the past. All right, so these are some of the transactions that I've closed this year and you'll see them here on the left-hand side. And then any saved searches will be on the right-hand side. All right, so let's go ahead and get started by selecting a property. What I'd like to do, of course, is I can search for any property here, or I'd like to show you how to find a property from inside of VMLS. All right, so I'm gonna access one of our listings Okay, I'm going to access one of our listings and here's a listing uh, um, that's from our office. And you'll notice up here, there is a little symbol for RPR. So you can always access this listing from inside of RPR, um, from inside of the MLS by selecting the RPR logo. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. You have the property address and you have the list price and you have some basic characteristics of the home. And then here you have what's called an AVM. Sometimes you're going to see something called an RVM. The RVM is more confident, right? It's, it's the estimated value that's more confident. The AVM is less confident. You have an AVM here instead of an RVM and the AVM reads 956,000. Take a look on the right hand side. Out of five stars, you only have one star. So RPR is uncertain of that price. You know, they're telling you that the price could be anywhere from 669,000 to 1,224 or 240. All right. So this is not your comparable value. Most people get to RPR and they see a price and then that's what they present their clients. And that's actually not accurate. All right. Now, if you did have an RVM, which is a realtor valuation model with five stars, then the price is more reliable. Yet it's still not a comparable value. It's still not a CMA. All right. So looking at an AVM 
or looking at an RVM is not going to deliver you the right price for the home. It's simply just an estimate. All right, you got some basic facts of the home here. And you have here the list price with the AVM. You have the uh, ability to create a CMA. You have the ability to change facts of the home so you can refine the value of the home based on home improvements. And on the right-hand side, you have the ability to create a seller net sheet. Underneath that, we have description. And then we have property facts. So you want to notice here the property facts, public records, and listing facts. And then you have your changes. Okay, RPR gives you the ability to make changes to the property if it is required. Right. So if you know that the property is actually larger or smaller than what is stated in public records or in the listing, then you can make changes on the right hand side. Underneath that, we have interior features, exterior features. We have legal description, schools in the area. So these are those schools that are assigned to this home. And their school ratings. And then here we have the owner of the property. Underneath there, we have listing history, public record history. So when was this uh, property last uh, sold? It was sold back in 2017 for $550,000. That was the last sale. You can view more details on that sale by clicking on uh, more details. And then you have sales and financing activity. You have here more information of the MLS and an estimated value of the property. All right, guys, all of this is your summary for this property. And you guys can always print your property summary by clicking on print right here. And you can save the property by selecting save. All right. What we are going to do now is that we're going to access a CMA. We're going to find the value of this home. So for this, you're going to click either CMA right here. Or you're going to scroll down a little bit and you're going to click on CMA value. All right, let's go ahead and click on create CMA. And then there are two options when creating a CMA, a comparative analysis and a sales comparison analysis. As realtors, we're always going to use the comparative analysis. The sales comparison analysis is used by an appraiser, and that's the approach that they will take when using RPR. All right, so we're going to begin with step one, which is confirming the facts of the home. Let's click on confirm facts. And here we're going to look at the basic information of the home. There are no changes to be made. So let's go ahead and just confirm the facts. If there were any changes to be made to the home, then you make them right now at this point. Next step is to search for comps, right? So we're gonna go ahead and click on find comps and we are gonna find, or we are gonna search for comparables that are active for sale right now, pending, active under contract and closed within 90 days. Remember all my settings, how I set it up to 90 days. So it's got three months. As a minimum, I'm looking for three bedrooms and as a minimum, I'm looking for two bathrooms. You can put a max if you like. I'm not going to place a max. Living square footage, living air square footage. We have a range here and then lot size. We're going to go ahead and include a range of the lot size. It, by default, lot size is not checked. You guys want to make sure that you always include lot size when you're studying single family homes or even townhomes. Uh, townhomes. All right, so next step is to go ahead and click on search and see if there are any comparables in the area. All right, so we did have some comps that showed here to the left of the subject property. Now, you guys can always search for comps by drawing a shape, a box. You can also draw a radius or you can draw a polygon. Or you guys can always click on use geography and you can use micro neighborhood, which is the same subdivision. In this case, the subdivision is known as Sherwood Forest in El Portal. 
And as you can see, there are no clumps in the area. So you're not really going to get anything inside of that subdivision. You can always do minor neighborhood. There's no data. You go to intermediate neighborhood, and that's this entire neighborhood known as El Portal. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go with the entire neighborhood of El Portal. I'm basically going to draw a radius of half a mile. So we're going to go here and we're going to draw a radius. Let's just go a little bit more at 0 0.60. Let's go 0 0.60 and let's go ahead and click on search in this area. So we have one sold property and we have two properties for sale. Now, I'm going to open this up to six months. See right here where it says modify search? We're going to go ahead and click on modify search and we're going to open it to six months and click on search. See if we were able to pick up any other comparables and no, we did not. So our one property that sold is this one right here. And that gives our property a value of $833,000. Okay. Now there is a property for sale at $599,000. That is not uh, a comparable. So we're not going to use that one. And then there is a property here for sale at $1,200,000. We're going to include that one. So basically we're in between $833,000 and $1.1 million, okay? Now, if you guys want to find other comps, perhaps you want to do all of El Portal, or maybe you want to stretch out your radius to one mile, all right? You guys can always come here and you can say, let's draw another radius and let's go out one mile. So let's do this one mile. Search in this area. Did we pick up any other comps? Yes, we did, right? We picked up a few other comps. So right here, we have a property that's sold. It's also inside of El Portal. And let's go ahead and select that one. All right, so now we have two properties that sold. There's one out here that's not inside of El Portal. So perhaps you may not want to choose that one or perhaps you want to choose that one. It, you know, it, it all depends. It's in Miami Shores. Let's go ahead and include it. All right. It makes no difference to our prices. They're pretty much right around the same price per square foot. 774 a square foot, 742 a square foot, 788 a square foot. So we have an idea. Properties are selling right around that price range. Okay. And then we did pick up other active listings that may... Uh, affect the price of the home. Let's go ahead and see the ones that are in El Portal. So right here we have a 715 in El Portal, 715 a square foot. Let's go ahead and select that one. Here we have 667, perhaps a little too low. And then we have 777 and that's also in El Portal. So let's go ahead and select that one. All right, so my final comp is going to be this right here between 769 and 1.1. And we're going to go ahead and click on update valuation and close. And our average price is $869,000. Keep in mind, the property is listed at $1,080,000. All right. So number three allows you to adjust comps. We don't need to adjust comps if we're choosing properties that are similar in size and in the same neighborhood. All right, I repeat, there are no needs to adjust your comps if you are choosing properties that are similar in size and from the same neighborhood. Otherwise, if you did need to adjust comps, you can always come here and you can make adjustments to your comps and that's going to affect the value of your subject property. All right. We're going to skip that one. And then you have number four, which is the results of your comp analysis. You can always recommend a price by clicking on edit. And then you can enter your own value. How high can you go? You can go up to 1,131,000. All right, so 
you know, it's really based on your opinion. You're going to take a look at the property. All right. So what is the property entail? You know, this is the property right here. All right. It's got a swimming pool. Here's the interior of the home. I wouldn't say it's remodeled. I would say it's a uh, vintage, right? It's a vintage El Portal Miami Shores home. It's in decent conditions. You know, obviously it, 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 it probably needs a little bit of remodeling. So let's say that based on our opinion of the home, we can come here and we can recommend the price. And as the listing agent recommended, $1,080,000, perhaps we can recommend something lower, maybe $1 million flat. All right, we're gonna go ahead and click on save. And I am going to present my client the average of the comparables and my recommended price. You do not have to recommend your own price. You can leave the average price of the CMA with the proper range. All right. Lastly, you want to go ahead and click on create report. All right. So notice how it takes you directly to the seller's report. It is the most common report. All right. It is the most common report that we will use in RPR. There is the property report. There also is the property flyer, mini property report, valuation workbook, market activity report, neighborhood report, and school report. You can create any report you like. The seller's report, which is the most common report, could be up to 81 pages in length. So it is a very large file. You wanna go ahead and click on this and I want you guys to see, okay? I have removed most of the elements of the report. I have shortened the report from a possible 81 pages to less than 20 pages. The idea is that you must go through this and you must select the uh, elements of the report that you want to include and you want to remove the elements of the report you don't need. And that's what I've done with mine. Underneath here, I, I say for the subject property, only include the main photo, right? We don't need to see all the photos. And then limit the market activity sections to only eight properties. And then for my comps, I like to see the side-by-side -side comparisons and also the um, individual market uh, report for each property. All right, underneath, you're going to go ahead and select display now in a PDF, or you can email it to someone by selecting email. We're going to go ahead and run the report now, and the report will be ready in several minutes. You're going to uh, hear a notification from RPR that the report is ready. All right, so as we wait, you're gonna see on the upper uh, part of your screen, there is a one, a numeric uh, value that you know that there is a report in queue and my report is now ready. So let's go ahead and click on download report. All right, guys, so this is my CMA for this property. It includes the cover photo. It includes my photo and my information. And then it also includes the list price and it includes my recommended price of $1 million. As I said, we are only including the main photo. You know, if I would have chosen all photos, uh, the property has, how many photos does the property have? It has 35 photos. So you would have had 35 photos in this report. Okay, here's the map showing where all the comps are. So all the comps are to the left. Right. And then there's one comp over here in Miami Shores. These are all the comps side by side. And then th these are the comps one by one with its own individual page. So when you're presenting this to your client, you're going to present uh, the fact that this property closed. It took 23 days to sell, as you can see here, 23 days on the market. Your department. Yeah. Who? Of course he did.
All right, so 23 days to sell at $1,030,000. This one here took 63 days to sell at $850,000. This one took 112 days to sell at uh, $915,000. This one took 335 days, almost an entire year. But it did, um, sorry, this is not even sold. This is active. This has been on the market now for almost a year at $1.2 million. This one's been on the market for 105 days, 839,000. This one's been on the market for 107 days, 985,000. And then you have your recommended pricing strategy. The median price is 950. So remember, we're looking at a listing where the uh the agent and the owner of the property are asking $1,080,000. The median is 950. The average is even lower at 869. So if you're representing the buyer, then you don't want to recommend a price of a million dollars. Okay. You want to recommend a price where you feel comfortable paying. The fact is that the median price is 950 with the average of 869. Now, of course, the uh the home itself, uh, if it's freshly remodeled and renovated and it it holds its value then it could be higher how much higher you know you saw it could be up to one million one hundred and thirty one thousand dollars all right guys this is your seller's report very important to learn how to create this report this is your cma presentation in rpr you want to go ahead and print it Right, or you can download the report to your computer as a PDF so you can then share it with your customers. Okay, it ended up being 15 pages, so not bad. All right, not bad at all. All right, versus 80 pages. So learn to remove some of the elements of the report that you don't need. And everyone's different. Everyone's different. There are people who want to do a larger report, include more elements to the report. You can most definitely do that. All right, but uh, we're we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and leave it as is. All right. So let's go ahead and go back to the property. You see right here, you're going to go back to the property. And let's say that the home did have some renovations. You see right here where it says refined value. Let's go to refined value. All right. And then drop down to where it says refine the value based on home improvements. All right. So let's say that the home had its bathrooms completely remodeled. Bathroom remodel mid range. And this remodel happened this year in January. Right. And the cost to remodel both bathrooms were. $16,000. At home improvement, it's giving you an additional $10,288 in value. So you can add to your comparable price an additional $10,288 because the bathrooms were remodeled back in January. Say you remodeled the kitchen, major kitchen remodel mid-range once again not an upscale home mid-range and once again it was done in january of this year and the total cost for the kitchen was twenty five thousand dollars which includes appliances you know countertops everything all right it added an additional ten thousand dollars in value okay for the kitchen so now you have a total of twenty thousand two eighty eight that you can add on top of the average price or whatever recommended price you have for the home. You can add home improvements to improve the value of the home. Down below, you can subtract value from the home or deduct value from the home by needed improvements. Let's say, for instance, this home, and I believe... This home needs a new roof. I mean, I'm looking at the there's a tarp on the roof, right? So if you come over here where it says refined value of the home, all right, and you put in needs 
new roof and it's going to cost you $45,000 for a new roof. That's a lot of money. It's going to cost you $30,000 for a new roof. You click on add home improvement and now guess what? It's going to remove value from the home. All right. So it's giving you an idea as a seller where you should list your property if a new roof is needed. Or it's giving you an idea as a buyer how much you should offer based on the fact that you would have to replace the roof yourself. Okay. So use this to give your customers, whether it's sellers or buyers, a better idea of what, uh, what the price should be. Now I want to tell you, or I want to ask you, see if anybody here can unmute yourself and let me know. Refining the value based on home improvements is going to be done by who? Seller or buyer? Anyone? No. The seller? Yes, the seller, of course. Why would the buyer increase the value of the home of their offer, right? So the refining the value based on home improvements is always going to be used by the seller. So we arrived at a price of a million dollars, but, and that's based on the market, uh, you know, the analysis of the market. But we have a home that has a brand new kitchen and brand new bathrooms. We want to increase the value of the home. So we're going to add home improvements and come up with a new value. Now the refine the value based on needed improvements is going to be done by the buyer. The buyer is going to nitpick at the property. The buyer is going to say, well, you're trying to sell it for a million dollars, but a new roof is needed and it's going to cost me $30,000. So here's my justif uh, justification to reduce the amount of the property by $30,000. All right, because of the new roof needed. Now I'm going to reset the value here and it goes back to zero. Okay. Now there's one more thing that you guys can do up here, but that... Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be careful with that one. Let's say, for example, you know the house has three bathrooms instead of two. All right, you come here, you put in three, you hit update. And in some cases, it's going to increase the value of the home. All right, let's take a look. And it increased it by $171,000. Do you guys really think an additional bathroom is worth $171,000? I do not. So I'm going to go ahead and reset that and just don't use this. All right. It, it seems a little inflated. All right, guys. So that's how you refine the value on uh, um, home improvements. Now, let's go here to neighborhood. Let's go to neighborhood. This is the neighborhood of El Portal or zip code 33138. It's going to tell you more about this uh, neighborhood uh, specifically. You're going to see that there is seven months of inventory. All right. So it's uh, already borderline buyer's market. All right. It's in the middle. It's still in. It's still what's considered a balanced market. Anywhere from six to nine months of inventory is a balanced market. But definitely we're not in a seller's market. Okay, the the uh, list price to sold price percentage is 94.8%. And that is up 1.34% over the last month. The median days in the market is 33 days. That's down 37% from the last month. And the median sold price is 1295 That's up 39.4% over the last month. That's crazy a 39.4% increase in the median sold price. Okay, the median estimated value of a home here is $729,000. Guys, the median estimated home value in Miami-Dade County currently stands at $650,000. Right, it's crazy, right? But in this zip code is $729,000. That's up 0.4% over the last um, month. And it's down actually half a percentage point in the last 12 months. 
Okay, so you get some information on the market and you get to see some other zip codes that are in the area and their numbers. You can go here to where it says housing and study the numbers for housing. You can study the numbers for people. All right, so in this zip code, there are 21,000. Uh, that's the population in this zip code and it's 6,300 per square mile, people per square mile. Population is up uh, 0.1%, not too much. The median age here is 41. And the male-female ratio here is 52. Okay. And as you can take a look here in Miami-Dade County, the female ratio, uh, the male-female ratio is that there's 49% male versus 51% uh, uh, female. Okay. And then you have information on education of the population uh, and then uh, population of children by age group, population of adults by age group. All of this is demographics, right? Economy, it tells you here the median household incomes. It tells you the income per capita and employment rate and then quality of life. You guys can always create a neighborhood report by going to neighborhood here, uh, sorry, um, going to you know where we are right now in the neighborhood report and then you click on create a report. Okay, let's go back over here to the property itself. Let's click on create a report real quick here and let's do a school report. So if you have a buyer that is uh, placing an offer on this property and they have children in school, right? These are the schools that pertain to that property. All right, so let's say that they have young children in elementary school. You click on Miami Shores Elementary School and click on select. This is the school that pertains to this property. So we're gonna go ahead and run the report. What information is gonna be included? Well, you will see. If you want to see more of the information, you just click on school report and it's gonna tell you, it's gonna give you a school summary reviews, nearby schools, nearby property for sale. Uh, we're gonna look at public charter and private schools, elementary, middle and high schools, uh, schools within five miles. Let's go with schools within one mile of the property and then pro properties for sale within one mile of the property. And then go ahead and click on run report. Let's take a look at Miami Shores Elementary School. You know, you're not only going to see Miami Shores Elementary School, you're going to see any other schools within a one mile radius in the event that your client's like, you know, uh, don't really want to send my child to Miami Shores Elementary School. There are other schools perhaps that show up within a one mile radius. All right, so Miami Shores Elementary School receives a, an overall grade of B with an academic grade of B minus and a teacher grade of B. It gives you here the school enrollment and the uh, ratio of students per teacher. Underneath here, we're gonna see some reviews and then other schools nearby. Remember, private schools, public schools and charter schools are all included, right? So we have a bunch of A plus schools here. We have a Miami Shores Montessori School, A plus, Miami Shores Community Church School. Miami Country Day School, and then also Miami Shores uh, Presbyterian Church School, all A pluses. These are all private schools, by the way. And then here are properties that are listed within one mile of our um, location there in El Portal. All right. So you can provide this to any buyer that is buying this property so they can have more information on schools in the area and other properties in the area, all right? So that is your school report. Now there's one last thing I'd like for you guys to learn how to do when uh, studying a property. Let's go ahead and click on the property address and look to the lower right corner. There is an, a, a resource called Valuate, right? There's a resource called Valuate. And what we wanna do is that we want to analyze the potential investment returns on this property. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and click on Valuate and we're gonna click on Continue. 
All right, so you need to decide what type of investment is this. Is it going to be a long-term hold or a flip investment? Obviously, we're not going to do a flip investment because we would need to purchase this property at a lot lower price, right? We need to purchase this property right around seven to $800,000, fix it, and with hopes of selling it around $1.2 million. All right, so we can turn a good profit. So let's buy this home for long-term purposes. All right, and let's pay 950,000 for the home, right? Let's pay 950,000 for the home. They're asking a million 80, it needs a new roof. Uh, so let's go right around that median price. Year one gross revenue. So let's say this home with a pool and El Portal rents at 6,000 a month, right? 6,000 a month. You're going to multiply 6,000 times 12, right? Multiply 6,000 times 12. That's $72,000 uh, 72, is your gross revenue. And then operating expenses, uh, taxes. You know, you guys can figure out taxes. If you just go down here, you'll see the taxes. Did we pass the taxes already? Uh, tax there. 2023, taxes were almost $10,000. Let's put our taxes at $10,000. Let's put our insurance at, uh, say, $6,000 and um, some other expenses. So if taxes are $10,000, insurance is $6,000, uh, let's add an additional $6,000 for miscellaneous expenses. So we're looking at $24,000 out of pocket. All right, expenses. Um, say that we're buying this property September 1st and we're gonna hold it for 10 years. We're going to put down 25%. Uh, so we're gonna finance 75% at 7% interest rate. Okay, so here are my numbers. Purchasing it September 1st, we're going to hold it for 10 years. We're going to finance 75% of the value of the home. We're going to, um, our interest rate is 7%. We're going to go ahead and click on submit. All right. So guys, based on those numbers, right? Based on those numbers, your internal rate of return, if you're financing, is at a negative. Your cash on cash, if financing is at a negative. All right, so this is not a good investment based on the numbers. The fact is, is that we have to either increase the rent, right? Or we have to lower the purchase price. Otherwise it doesn't make sense. Now, if you pay cash, then you are looking at a 5% internal rate of return and a 5.79% average cash on cash. But of course, you would have to pay $950,000 in cash to see a 5% return every year, okay? The idea is to find something that is positive when you finance, okay? You guys can always go to sources of funds right here and you can rework the interest rate. Let's say, for example, you were able to get 6.5, 6.5% interest rate. All right, so we fixed that. You know, it's it makes a little bit of a difference, but not too much. I mean, you're looking at a 1% return. All right, now let's say that we do lower this price to let's say $875,000. All right, now we're looking at a 5% return on our investment every year by lowering the purchase price to $975,000. Your cash on cash is 2.38. Guys, as long as you're not negative in your cash on cash, you're solid. If you are pulling a return of 5%, 
but you are negative in your cash on cash, that means that you have to go out of your pocket as the homeowner. You have to go out of your pocket to complete the expenses of the property per year, right? You don't have any positive cash flow. But as long as you are positive in cash on cash, that means you are generally turning a 5% profit every year on this property. All right. This is how you will analyze investment properties in RPR. Okay. Now, I wouldn't consider this property an investment property. I just wanted to show you how to get it done. This property is more for someone who may want to live there, or perhaps the rent was, uh, you know, 6000 a month was too low. Maybe it rents for more. Who knows? All right. Let's go back to our homepage. Let's click on home. Now, if you guys want to study schools in any area, it's very simple. Go to research, go to school search, and you guys can study schools, enter a city, a state, a zip code, or you can search by school name. Let's say that we've got clients moving to Weston, right? Weston, Florida. Select Weston. And school types, we're looking for all school types, elementary, middle, and high school. Let's go ahead and click on search. Weston has some of the better schools in all of Broward County. We have here a B plus elementary school. We have an A plus high school. We have an A minus elementary school. We have an A minus elementary school. A minus elementary school, pretty much all A minuses and a few A pluses, all right? So if you want to know more about a particular school, let's click on Cypress Bay High School. And this is, of course, 9th through 12th grade. It gives you the address of the high school, the phone number of the high school, and it gives you that it receives an A+. The enrollment is pretty large, right? I mean, 4,800 students, and it's 24 students per one teacher. And it gives you the average GPA in this high school is 3.55. So I believe that's an A. All right, out of 4,495 responses, the average GPA here is 3.55, which is really good. Math proficiency, reading proficiency, gifted students, graduation rate is 98%, ACT scores and SAT scores, and then teacher grades. Guys, you can see reviews on the school by selecting reviews, and here you're going to see reviews on the school left by either uh, uh, alumni or graduates, right? Current students or parents. The source is Niche. This is, uh, I guess, the company that puts together the reports. All right, so you can do schools. And again, I repeat, anywhere nationwide, you can do schools, all right? Let's go to research, neighborhood. You can search any neighborhood in the entire U.S., all you need is a city, a zip code, and you can find the neighborhood. Let's go back to Weston, right? Let's go back to Weston, and let's find out more information on Weston, and let's go ahead and click on search. So you got a buyer. They're looking at Weston as a possible landing place, and in Weston, there are 3.6 months of inventory. 17 days on the market is the median days on market. So Quite the difference between uh, El Portal and uh, Weston, right? Homes in Weston are selling a lot faster. There are there's less inventory in Weston. The median sold price is eight hundred and forty thousand dollars. That's up five percent. And then you have over here the median estimated value. That's up nine point one percent over the last twelve months. In El Portal, it was down half a percentage point in the last twelve months. All right, study the information, housing, people, economy, quality of life in any zip coder city in the entire U.S. And that's research. Now, if you guys want to use RPR for some, uh, say, social media postings and some content, you can always go to what where it says residential market trends. Let's go there. All right, let's go ahead and put in Weston once again. 
all right, less than right here. And what you see here is the information that you just saw, right? The information you just saw. Now you can throw all of this over here into an image by clicking on share. And you can share it on Facebook directly from inside of RPR. You can share it on X, on LinkedIn, and then there's more options for sharing. There is a JPEG, right? Or a PNG. Let's go ahead and click on JPEG and it's gonna create an image. All right, let's take a look at the image. Let me share this image with you. All right, so this is the image that was created and you guys can go ahead and share it, all right? You can share it with your um, followers on social media. Going back over here. Now you can also create a script in the event that you guys want to write about the, the, the market conditions in Weston. You can click on create scripts, all right? Uh, what type of tone would you like? Professional, engaging, or con uh, conversational? And choose your audience, buyers and sellers, or buyers or sellers. All right, let's go with uh, buyers and sellers, both. And then what would you like uh, to do with your script? Create a script video, social campaign, or analyze metrics? Uh, let's go with the uh, video. All right, so it's using AI to generate a script that you will then describe the Western market in your video. All right, so opening shot of Robert Rodriguez standing in front of a beautiful uh, a beachfront property. Not, not a beachfront property because there's no beaches in Western, but let's say that you took a very nice photo of yourself. Uh, that's going to be the, the beginning part of the video. And then, you know, here, we're going to say, hey there, folks, it's Robert Rodriguez, your friendly neighborhood realtor with Elite Ocean View Realty, coming at you with a market update for Western Florida in June of 2024. If you're a buyer or seller in this area, you're definitely going to want to stick around for this one. All right. And it just tells you exactly how to run your video. If you want to do a social campaign instead, use AI to generate a script for your social media postings. All right, so Weston market update. As we head into summer, Weston is seeing a steady increase in housing inventory with 3.6 months supply. This means more options for buyers and potentially more competition for sellers. All right, with RPR, guys, you have the ability to create content for your marketing. All right, and that's going to be done inside of residential market trends. So go to research, go to residential market trends, and you can do the same. The last report that I want to show you in today's class is the residential market activity. All right, this is like a hot sheet. This is like what is going on in this market in the last 30 days, the last 90 days, the last 180 days. So I'm going to go back to Weston again. Western Florida, and then change type. We're going to look at properties that are for sale only. Uh, new listings closed, and that's it. No pending, no distress, no expired, nothing like that in the last month. Okay, in the last month. Then property types, we're going to look at only single family homes. Price range, bedrooms and bathrooms, search, and then take a look at your results here on the map. 162 properties showed up, 162 properties. Okay, so that's on the map. Now, how do you see the information, right? How do you see the information? Well, right here, you have the map, right? And then you can create the report right here by clicking on create report. But if you wanna see the information first, you see up here on the upper right corner, there is list view, gallery view, and then map view. Let's go to list view. These are all the new listings in Weston within the last 90 days. And then your closed sales. All right, guys. So again, you can, uh, it's a hot sheet. It's pretty much what's going on 
in Weston in the last uh, night of, what did I put here? In the last month for new listings and closed properties. Uh, say we remove the new listings and only leave closed. Click here. And there are 73 uh, closed sales in Weston in the last month for single family homes. And once again, you have list view, you have gallery view, and you have map view. All right, and you guys can always create a report by clicking on create report, and it's gonna create the market activity report. So you can present it to your uh, clients. All right, guys, RPR is an enormous program. There's so much more. There's commercial side of RPR. We will cover some of this in uh, our uh, working with investments uh, class where we cover more of the commercial side of RPR. So look out for that class. Once we uh, host it, you'll be able to learn more about the commercial side of RPR. Does anyone here have any questions before we end our training? All right, let's get to using RPR guys. It's a, an essential tool. It's one of the tools that as realtors, we should be using every day when we are researching properties, working with buyers or sellers. All right, guys. So thank this, you. This is awesome, Robert. Thank anyone. you. Thank you for your time, Robert. This is great. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Robert. Have a good day, man. Have a good day, everybody. Likewise. Have a great you day. You too. Thank, thank you, Robert. Robert. Thank you so much. Thank Absolutely. you, Robert. All right. You're welcome. Bye-bye now.